everyone turned on me. Are you on the Kardashian payroll and like you're sucking their dick and all this shit? First of all, I care about the minutia. Not everybody cares. Like posting what I want to post, interviewing who I want to interview, asking what I want to ask. This is my show. I can't even speak right now because I got my lips filled oh, by yeah, Dr. You? Dennis Gross and I can't even, I'm speaking with a lisp. <laughs> I can't believe it. But they just get really big at first and then they go down. Like Looked like a lifeboat later. yesterday. I am still in shock that you would do it right before pot. Like that's some confidence. I don't give it energy. No, but it looks really good. And I just call it out. I think like, I think. Yeah. If you like, call, if you don't say anything, it might be awkward. <laughs> well, yeah, I, mean, like, <laughs> I can pull it over my fucking forehead. What do you? <laughs> yeah. Let's just pretend there's aren't these giant lips aren't here. But isn't that a little like hard for people if they like have nine to fives? I don't know. I've never been one to shy away from from plastic surgery. No, but I know. That? But for people that don't want to announce it, like well, they here's go to work what, the next day. Here's and... what I heard that celebrities do. And this is actually a really great tip. Oh, mask? No. Oh. Look over here, squirrel. That's what I call it. What does that mean? It means like, look over here, a squirrel. So like while they're getting a facelift, they'll dramatically change their hair color. So it's like, look over here, squirrel. Ah. So you're like looking at their new hair color. Yeah. So what did you do something else that I don't know about? No, I'll, I'm open about everything I've done. I don't care. But the I'm lips just... aren't just a giant distraction for something else that's oh. going on? Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> but that's strategic. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't know. Okay, Amanda, welcome to the Skinny Confidential <laughs> Him and Her podcast. Yo. I'm so, I'm literally honored. I thought about it. I was like, this is like, you guys are like the OGs. Well, why would, I don't think, I, I mean, we're, we're honored. Um, and I think it would have happened sooner, but I want it to be, we want it to be in person. Lauren yeah. and I like big, you know, like I got to have this interaction. Yeah, you guys don't do Zooms. Mm -mm. No, I, I think that they make for poor interactions, especially with three people. Oh yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. I don't even do three people. Yeah. Like one, like if you and I were on Zoom, we could right. kind of go back and forth like right. tennis, but like when there's three of us, it's really awkward. Right. It's like a threesome. It's like, uh, you got to grab this dick and... <laughs> Touch this tit. And it's like, it's like a lot of work. You yeah. Know what I mean, yeah. So I think that doing it in person, it's, it's better energy. Wait, can I tell you guys what I'm doing right now? Speaking of lip filler, I'm licking my lip because I have this thing <laughs> where I watch people and then I copy them. Is Lauren licking my lip? No, but you probably do in your life because you get lip filler. Lip filler people lick their lips because it's like a weird, feel. like Kim does it all the time. If you watch the Kardashians, when she talks, she's like, it goes like this. So I'm doing it now because I'm a copycat of human, like just how people move. So I'm doing it, but I didn't get lip filler. I actually have a really incredible theory on this and it's so in line with what you just brought up. So I think a lot of people do what you just said. I think they copy human nature and there's trends of mannerisms. So let me give you an example. I noticed on TikTok and I'm going to try to do it right, that people talk with their hands. So hold on. They go, I wish people could see visually, but like they can. There's a they video. talk with their they talk with like their hands and they go like this. Do you know what I'm talking about? And then I noticed everyone starts to go like oh, this. Really? Watch, go watch TikTok with their hands. Okay. And they also do something with their mouth. You're right. And everyone does it, and it becomes sort of like a mannerism yeah. moment in the year that it is. Well, because I was talking about Julia Fox and like how much I'm into her now, and like her voice is so crazy. Um, that people would be like, that's annoying. I live for that kind of shit. Like, just talk weird, have lisps, like, have long, drawn-out <laughs> shit. Like, I love it. But then she put up a story when her kid was probably sleeping, and she's pretty, like, low-maintenance. Like, I feel like she lives in a super normal apartment, and, and her kid was sleeping, and you could hear the sound machine, and she was just talking normal. Like, she was talking normal. She, like, forgot to put it on kind of vibe. Like, she was just talking. And I was like, see, she puts it on, not in like a fake way, but in a like, it's fun to do things and make life more interesting than just like talk boring. And, you know, so well, I get it. Well, it's a brand. Yeah. You're branding your voice. No, because I get shit for my voice a lot. I love your voice. People hate it. Sometimes the comments are so mean about my voice and I'm like, I don't think it's that bad, but I also don't understand what you want me to do. Like, I love your voice. Thank you. Don't I don't think it's that bad. Like there's worse, you know? What's wrong with your voice? I don't know. They call it like, um, what's it called? The thing. Vocal fry? Yeah. What does that mean exactly? I don't think that's what I have. It's I like think you I can have not <laughs> <laughs> The self-awareness, baby. I think, I think it's a thing that people have. I think it's like a Courtney voice, maybe. 
Can you do it? I think. You know what I think it is? <laughs> when you don't like <clears throat> go a hum and you just lean in. So like you like you're just like, you well, know. That's like sexy baby. Oh, sexy baby. Okay. Oh, that was the worst. That that didn't that wasn't <laughs> that, that was didn't. Crap. <laughs> Oh my God, Lauren, we can't have you with the camera in here. You keep looking there and not at me. I Well, I have to look to see how my lips are looking because they're <laughs> so big. Sorry. I'm not trying to look at myself, but I have to look at how these lips look. They're so She's big. Never... I'm trying to actually People, like... People, though, walk around with those every day. You're aware. Yeah, I don't like too much filler in the face, yeah, though. Yeah, Which is like really like <laughs> hypocritical to say right now. I don't like a lot of filler in the face because yeah. I feel like it pushes up the under eyes and makes the eyes look small and makes... You look like pillow face. First of all, you and your entire family have huge eyes. I'm so I don't so understand big. why. You have like, huge eyes. Really? Except for me. I don't have any. Oh, my God. You do have small eyes. I can't see shit out of these things. <laughs> but I, did... I cheated. Does Michael ever remind you of... Christian Bale? Yeah. Oh, you get every day. I'm so unoriginal. Okay. He... Every like insight in the American Psycho, though. Every time. Well, like in that it's movie good to clarify. It's good to clarify because he just played Dick Cheney. You know what I mean? So I need to, I need to know which version. In American The Machinist? Psycho. Exactly. Specifically American Psycho. You know what's well, He's so, my cousin. Every that's single our, time. That's a compliment, though. He gets the compliment. He taps me on the shoulder and goes, he goes like this. Hey, listen. Hey, hey. I don't ever I don't ever I don't ever want like, to forget. Literally, we're in the airport yesterday and someone told him and he taps me like he's going to tell me something like really interesting. I'm like, I never what? ever want her to what? forget. What? What do you need? And he's like, they just said I looked like Christian Bale. I'm like, great. Oh my God. Hey, I have an embarrassing story about that. Actually, it was here in New York uh, City. Here we go. He's telling you now for we you. We went out one night years ago and some, some like, it was not like a nightclub. It was like a lounge type place somewhere. We were went back before our kids days. And out of nowhere, we're just sitting there and like, they, like we start like pointing and doing all this stuff and they come and they start and they bring like, Hey, come this way, come this way. And they put me at this like specific table in the center of the room and they started bringing out all these like champagne and alcohol and all this stuff. And I'm sitting there I'm like, Oh, what the fuck is going on? And all of a sudden you like see them in the corner, like talking to them, like, uh, like, like maybe they made a mistake. And sure enough, they're like, we made a huge mistake. Like get out, get out. Like, so they brought they us. Thought you were Christian I don't Bale. know who they People thought we were. People tell me I look like Adriana Lima. So, but <laughs> <laughs> but it was embarrassing because they brought us there and then they booted us out. They're like, oh, you huge get it. mistake. You look like Batman. Why are you the worst ever? Why, like, why is the merch the worst ever? You mean the best? No, isn't it say the worst ever? Oh, no, just the worst. Yeah, why? You don't know the story? Kind of. I, I kind of know it. But First I all, on Michael, it was annoyingly really looked good when you wore it. I will say when men wear it, it's so cool. Well, on them. I need to get more. Ooh. Yeah. She's kind of saying like wear it because it was looking cool. I'm kind of saying like, no. Um, it <laughs> that was happened. before you, before you blew you up. You used I'm to... not a big merchy girl. You what know, you? like I can't believe I'm doing merch. Oh, I like your merch. But I like it. That's the thing. So when I do it, I'm like, it has to be something that I would wear, you know, not even just like represent somebody that I like, but just because it's like looks cool. I, thought, I mean, I there's wore a story yours, behind it. Yeah, I thought yours was cool. That's why I wore it. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So it came because something very that happens to people and it is people's fear happened to this girl when I posted a thirst trap of myself and she wanted to send her friend, she's becoming the worst, and she sent it to me. And I just thought it was so funny. So I was like, oh, I am. And she's like, but in the best way possible. <laughs> And I just thought it was so good. So I posted it and then everyone was just like merch, merch, merch. And I was like, okay, it has to be merch. But I think it's cool because it's, it's first of all, the, the way it happened was so cool and funny and I didn't block or anything. Like it's fine. You know what I mean? It's not like mean it's, it's whatever. Um, so it's like, yeah, you're the worst, but the best way possible. I love it. My favorite is when, what just happened to you or what happened to you with that is they accidentally send it to you. Yeah. You respond and then it's always something nice back. Oh, like a pet, like a backpedal. Yeah. Always. Yeah. And or if, if it's a troll comment and you respond, it's always something like, oh, I didn't know you were going to see this. Yeah. But I just wanted to, yeah. let, you know, can I? Da -da 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 -da. Yeah. Do you find with the growth that you've had that some of the people that were there early are frustrated with that? Meaning with like, like meaning like they see like they've seen you evolve and all of a sudden now you're doing these huge interviews and like do, do, are, are some of those people upset that that's happening? I'm assuming there are people, but like the, the, the amount of people that are like proud and feel like they've been in it with me and, and, and 
are so happy for me. Like, I don't even have to call my friends and tell them, like, I'll get way more support from these strangers. So that I feel way more. I think that that I, I really think that the people that I don't think people turn like I remember there was this influencer that was kind of almost canceled. And I talked to her because I felt bad for her. And she was just like, everyone turned on me. And I was like, I don't think they turned. I think that the people that don't like you are, are happy. There's a reason to, to not like you. Do you know what I mean? It's not like I love her so much, but she did this thing and now I can't love her, you know? So I, I feel like, of course, I feel that from people that are like, are you on the Kardashian payroll? And like, you're sucking their dick and all this shit. Um, and I'll say this to them. Like, if you want to find a Kardashian hate account, there are so many. The world hates on them 24 seven. I'm not going to hate on them. And you wouldn't if you had a fucking personal relationship too. And if they gave you an exclusive interview, you know, so you expect me to shit on them on my account and then you'll be happy. I would find it hard pressed someone who wouldn't be excited to sit down and interview them in their own home. Yeah. And studio. Yeah. And someone that wouldn't take that opportunity. Yeah. Well, the reason and I try not to suck their dick. Like it's hard when they're watching to say bad stuff. Right. It's hard because I'll see Kim's little face on the bottom. Um, <laughs> and I'm like, it's like your mom watching kind of, you know, it's kind of like, uh, uh so I do my best and like, I'm not going to just be like, that was, good. but I also have known them for so long as a fan and whatever that the reason they've succeeded, like they're not sensitive. I can say that I don't like her leather dress and she'll still like me, you know, but I won't say like, you know, she is on a Zempic. Like, do you get the difference? Like, I won't say, I, I said like that I don't like her dress the other week. And then I was like happy she changed it up. So there are things I will say, but I think it's just being a little bit respectful that they are watching and that they are like so friendly to me. So, yeah, like, even I, I don't see how anyone could expect you to be, to try to harm somebody that you actually admire and are friends with. Yeah. Right. Like we wouldn't do that either. Right. But the reason I asked earlier is because, so Lauren and I have been doing this for a, a while and I think, you know, it started as something different and it's evolved. And during that time, obviously we've gotten married and we've had two children and all this. And there's like, it's a, and there are people that, you know, sometimes get frustrated, like, oh, you're changing or this has changed or the show has changed or this type of get, you know what I mean? And like, I think sometimes people, the, the people that are really there for you are happy to see the involvement. Um, but I think some people, they get frustrated if you're not the same thing mm -hmm. that you started as always. wants to be the same? Yeah. Though. Yeah. Well, because I see the, I see it all the time. They're like, oh, I used to be this. I and don't I, think like, that's like rude. If you run into someone that you haven't seen in 10 years and you're like, wow, you haven't changed a bit. You're the exact same. <laughs> you're just like you were in sixth yeah. grade. Like, Listen, what I more? used to have got to be glued, spiked hair in high school. I'm not, what I kept, got to be glued is great for eyebrows. What if I just kept that now? What if I just had that yeah, for the last like 20 years? Change, and I also, like, I'm so self-aware that there are so many things that I don't do that, like, other people do in this space. Like, I'll never ask, what do you want to see more from me? I'll never ask, what do you want me to ask? Like, a guest. Like, I'm never taking, this isn't a common box. Like, I'm a person that's just, like, posting what I want to post, interviewing who I want to interview, asking what I want to ask. Like, even if there's, let's say, like, I'll have, and I'm, I, I have to stay true to myself. So even if there are times where I want to ask something even a little bit related, I'll be like, I can't. Like, that goes against kind of what I believe in. Like, what do you mean? Give an example of what you're talking about there. Like, let's say a guest is coming on. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm sure they they would want to ask something. But I'm like, I don't want to open that box of having you tell me what you think I should ask. Is and I get that people do it. And that's fine. And I know that you guys do it sometimes. And I'm not judging doing it. I'm saying I don't want to do it. You got to do what works for you. Yeah. I think that's what makes you successful. But that's I sorry. I'm bringing it back to your point of like, I don't then care. Like if you think I change and you don't like the change and that's fine. If I'm not asking what you want me to ask, then like I, you know what I mean? I think that there's a, you can't please everyone. Yeah. Social media mentality. It's like, hopefully that's the energy that everyone's bringing to the next year. Yeah. And I definitely was bitchier probably because no one was watching. You're way bitchier when no one's watching. I want to talk about When you that. have 12 followers, you can yeah, say when you, whatever you Go want. back to when you had 12 followers. I think I've gotten more bitchier because I'm just, <laughs> I'm more frustrated now. Were you not skinny, not fat when you had 12 followers? Yeah. So you just decided to start this account one day. Yeah, literally. And that name, God fucking knows why. Where, are you on the couch like eating popcorn? I'm on 
you know, the thoughts you have in bed at night where you're like, I'm going to take a pottery class tomorrow. Yeah. And then you never I, do it. Yeah. That was that with this. It was like I was then it was like the fat Jewish, like all those just meme accounts. And I was really into that. And I was like, I write like I want to write funny shit. I should open an account. What should I call it? And if you think about it back then, they, there were names like that, like fuck Jerry, fat Jewish. Um, my therapist says like, so I knew I needed like a name and not like my name. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I just, it came to me. It was very literal of like how I felt my whole life. Um, and yeah. And I started with like making my family follow me, hashtags, you know, all the shit. And when did you have 2016 like- that was. Oh, wow. That's a long time yeah. ago. Yeah. I'm not a little TikTok, you know. But the podcast didn't start that yes. then. When did the po- when did the podcast start? 2019. 2019. So when you start in 2016, did you know what your audience was? Did you know you were creating a brand? Or no, was- are you kidding me? None of that. Like I still can't say that word. It's a brand. I know, but I, I. Oh, you'll have to talk to me afterwards. I know it's I will. A brand. I know I need to get better. It's at a brand. That. I need to get better. At, Own it. It's at, a business. It's a brand. No, I it, know. It's a brand because, like, from in a perspective, when I'm not doing the podcast, like, people will discuss your brand with me, right? Like, people that are outside, like, it is a known entity now. Like, and it's funny when that starts to happen. It's like people know who you are personally, but they know the brand yeah. maybe more in some cases. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I. To me, it's like a brand is just like the LLC. You know what I mean? I don't know why. It's hard for me. I, I I know that it's something that I should work on, but it comes from a place of just genuinely, I love this shit so much. It's hard for me to like talk about it like a business. There's this book, Mastery, and it's all about putting together all these little things that you like into one to build your ultimate career. And that's exactly what you've done. Can you say that again slower? <laughs> You said it so fast. There's this book called Mastery. It's one of my favorite books. And it's about putting all these little tiny random things together. So an example like for me is I used to scrapbook all the time when I was little. Like that was like my thing. But I would have never thought when I was little, I'm going to be a scrapbooker. Right. But what I essentially am is a scrapbooker. Yeah. That's how you are. Like there's a bunch of little things. Yeah. I didn't think I was going to like be on Instagram and have a podcast and whatever. But I was always obsessed with celebrities and pop culture reading, you know, from the magazines at the supermarket with my mom to the, when there were blogs, like just blogs to read about it. So I've always been interested in it, but I always thought the only option was to like be in this industry would be like to be an actor. And I wanted to do that too. Like I tried. And what's crazy is that if you were reading a tabloid with your mom checking out and you looked up and you were like, mom, I want to read tabloids for a living. She would have been like, oh, that's so cute. But like, that's essentially what you're doing. Yeah, that's great. I know. And it's crazy. And now like the things I was reading, you know, I could be cited in as like where people found shit out. So it's, um, it's a trip. It's crazy. You are cited where people find shit out. That's why I, I, that's why I get all my pop culture now. Oh my God. That's the only place. place. If I don't know what's going on, I'll just go to your page. Yeah. The thing is like, I never want to say like, I'm the first to know anything. I'm not. Some stuff I could notice, but like, that's not what I put forward is like, come here and you'll, you know, be the first to know. I think that it's just why it is where it is today is mostly because like, I am super passionate about it and I really do like it. So when I do talk about this stuff, first of all, I care about the minutia. Not everybody cares. Like, I love minutia. Like, yeah. Oh my minutia. God. Go off on the minutia. Yeah, like I could literally... I mean, sometimes it's like, stop, because I'll just really get into something, you know? Like, give me an example. Well, I'm trying to think, but even like the Uggs, it's like, you know. <laughs> what the fuck's going on with the Uggs? What's up with you guys? <laughs> and can you believe they sent me one pair? Like, they should send me the factory. Wait, what? It tell me about the Uggs. <laughs> no. Wait, like, why, like, why should they send you the factory, though? Give us mean? context. You know how many I sold? No, has tell Dear, us about what Has Dear Media been in contact with oh, Uggs for okay. you? Well, sorry, Hold Lauren. It. I thought you were following along. I am following <laughs> along, but I didn't see the Uggs thing. Okay. Wait, Lauren, is that in our brief? Oh, no, no, no. The Uggs? Uggs? Uggs in the brief. Yeah, no, okay. Quick break to talk about one of our favorite partners, AG1 Athletic Greens. These guys have become a staple in our routine. As many of you know, last year I did a full health overhaul, got all my blood work done, got all my hormone levels, my blood work levels, vitamin levels, everything. And it all came back pretty regular, pretty good actually, if I'm being honest. 
Then later I went and got my gut health tested and that did not come back so great. So I went into a deep dive to try to fix my gut, which I fortunately have done. One of the staples in my gut health support regimen has been Athletic Greens. It is an incredible product. It's made with 75 super high quality vitamins, minerals, and whole food source ingredients that deliver benefits like mood, immune system, and sleep support, sustained energy, and so much more. And like I said, it also has gut support, which I definitely needed. If I didn't do that gut health test, I would have never known that I even needed gut support. So implementing Athletic Greens was a game changer. For someone like me who struggles to get in my greens, I've always struggled to get in the greens. This is an absolute staple in my routine. Now I wake up every morning, have a huge glass of water, dump a scoop of athletic greens and boom, get all of the minerals, all the greens, all the vitamins that I need. I think this is a game changer for people that want to get the most bang for their buck. I've said multiple times on this show, if I could only recommend one supplement, and I know we recommend a lot, it would be athletic greens just because you get so much for so little. We take it when we travel, we take it when we're at home, we take it when we're on the go. It is just an incredible product. So check it out today. If you want to take ownership of your health today, is a good time to start. Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash skinny. That's athleticgreens.com slash skinny. Check it out. Okay. So when I moved from LA to Austin, I really wanted to just make over a lot of things in my life. And one of those things was my cupboard for my cleaning supplies. Like it was, it was atrocious. I had to redo the whole entire thing. So I basically got rid of everything that was underneath my sink and I switched everything to Branch Basics. This is a brand that I can tell you behind the scenes people speak so highly of. I've talked to doctors, scientists, the everyday mom about this brand. It's non-toxic. It's hyperallergenic. It's free of fragrance. It's free of hormone disruptors and harmful preservatives. And most importantly for me, it's baby and pet safe. So my brain started spinning when I first decided to redo this cabinet. And what I started thinking about was my chihuahuas, who are so little, boon and slim, are on the ground. And here we are cleaning our ground with these toxic cleaning supplies. And I was like, they're literally breathing it in all day long. So how can I switch this up to non-toxic? Anyway, got a lot of recommendations. Branch Basics was the one. I'm obsessed You should know that their premium starter kit will provide you with everything you need to replace all of your toxic cleaning supplies in your home. So this is like a real no-brainer. And also they have this system called the refill model. And so once you run out, the only thing that you need to repurchase is the concentrate and oxygen boost, which is amazing because it's sustainable. I'm a huge fan of this brand. I can't shut up about it. And I'm so excited to give you a code that I use for myself. You can save 15% when you use code SKINNY at branchbasics.com. Their premium starter kit replaces all your cleaning and lasts forever. Again, that's code SKINNY for 15% off all starter kits. Is it just me or is everybody running around with a cold right now? Is everybody sick? RSV is going around. Who knows what's going on with COVID? Who knows what's going on with all these sicknesses? All I know is that I am not getting sick. And that is because I am constantly taking my propolis immune support throat spray from Beekeepers Naturals. For those of you that don't know what propolis is and what Beekeepers Natural is, propolis is made by bees and backed by science. Bee propolis acts as the bee's medicine. It contains antioxidants, vitamin C, zinc, iron, B vitamins, and more to support the human immune immune system. Propolis is the defender of the hive. This is what bees use to protect themselves and their hive from bacteria, and you can use it as well. They have this throat spray that is incredible. Lauren and I take it every day. We give it to our children. There's a children's version. They also have a cough syrup, and this stuff is like magic. We've been using it for years, especially after the founder, Carly, came on the show and told us all the benefits. If you haven't listened to that episode, I highly suggest you do so. If you just search Carly Beekeepers, the Skinny Confidential, you'll find it. And it's all certified keto, certified paleo, gluten-free, and natural. They're really making a dent when it comes to natural medicine. And this is what Lauren and I use as daily maintenance, as well as when we start to feel like we're a little under the weather. We're such huge fans of products like this. Today, Beekeepers Naturals is offering you an exclusive offer. Go to beekeepersnaturals.com slash skinny or enter code skinny to get 25% off your first order. That's B-E-E-K-E-E-P-E-R-S-N-A-T-U-R-A-L-S dot com slash skinny or enter code skinny. Beekeepers Naturals products are also available at Target, Whole Foods, CVS, and Walgreens. Start feeling better every day today. Beekeepersnaturals.com slash skinny. Um, Okay. So first of all, these, the Taz, you're not with the platform. Are these the platform Taz? These are the Taz. Okay. So that was last year, which I love them still, but these are the new. Oh, ouch, Lauren. Ouch. 
You missed it. See, you're not following too closely. These are my, these I love more, by the way, the Taz. But um, these really I, you know why shoe. I disagree with you, Amanda? About what? About what you're saying. What? These flatter the leg more. Is that a good thing? Yeah, I want my leg flattered. But it's flatter. not really. Oh, flatter, not flattened. No, flatter, okay. <laughs> flatter. Yeah, no, no. That's, but I'm agreeing with you. I'm saying I like these more, but okay. they were last year. So I'm a chuggy. You're not, because I wear them more. Okay. Than these. So we're chuggy. Well, yeah, I think that Uggs are a little chuggy, but. Um, could I get away with wearing these Uggs here? No one cares about you right now. Go on. <laughs> you could get away with a Taz. Oh, I could so see him in a Taz chestnut non-platformed. He has like around those. the house. Yeah, but you know what he does? What? This motherfucker goes outside and walks around, walks around the pool and picks stuff up and goes outside <laughs> and, and, gets the package and comes back in and stomps his disgusting Taz feet all over my fucking white rug. So fuck <laughs> that. Don't give him my I, I always thought these were house shoes. I know. A lot of people in Australia, I always get DMs from Aussies being like, we never wear them outside. And I'm like, we do. I don't wear shoes inside. But so, okay. so I can obsess, right? I'll be like. I'll see them on, let's say, like a, a a super one supermodel. Like I saw them on like Elsa Hulk. Okay, what's her name? Okay, you know what that is? Yeah, I don't know her last name. And I was but... like, oh my god, like these are for sure the new Uggs. And then I start like whatever, and then I get them like, and then I post about them, and then if people tag me, like I'll repost like every single time people buy it and tag me in it, and it becomes like just a nuisance. Like it becomes so crazy where I have to stop. So I really lean into like fads and things but about the minutia um uh uh i don't know like everything every everything like it's not just about i less care about the big shit like it's not like kanye and kim got a divorce like that you could see anywhere like let's talk about other stuff like you want to know why she switched to a long acrylic would die to know like when she wears jeans, you Let know, me, how do you, how do you deal with that Kanye Kim thing? Because now that we've just talked about being friends with, with him doing what he's doing, like, how do you, like, do you comment on that? Do you dive in? Yeah, on that? I did. Things that are really like out there. It's like in the media, I even commented, I posted when Ray J went off because it was everywhere, you know? And also I was team, like, it was very clear that Ray J was being like crazy. I feel like Ray J miss the moment with that oh my god I, I like felt I think I even literally told Kim this when I saw her like he's so funny like he literally posted I watched the whole live I was hysterical because no one cares he could have been saying the wildest shit but literally like you said no one cared and he thought he was doing the sit down with Daily Mail and he thought like damn the world you know they're gonna be canceled and he fucking said the what he said that Chris watched the tapes and no one cared. That didn't make like, said that headlines. He was having a threesome with Chris and Kim and no one would have cared. Could you imagine? What, did he just like miss the moment or something? He yeah, missed the like, moment by a, but here's what I think. Like a decade? Here's my take on it. My take is when the sex tape came out and even for years after that, oh, of course she's going to get this. <laughs> of course this, she pulls out the phone. I will <laughs> talk anything more. She, um, when the sex tape came out, we all kind of assumed there was something iffy, right? I feel like no one till this day still knows like how the deal happened, who was in the room, did she know, did she agree? So we weren't shocked if like she kind of knew or do you get what I mean? Well, I feel like it was like the the Pam and Tommy thing was like the the actual authentic thing that happened, like that really happened and then people were like, "Oh shit, look at like what happened after that." That's the blueprint and then people started kind of like doing these things. So like I think as a public we all know, okay, like there's a lot of this stuff that goes on. You're like, okay, like that is a a press move. Well, hold right? on. Why does anyone care though about the sex tape thing? I don't well, because care. Because on the show, she was like, ah, oh my God, Lauren. <laughs> Did you get that piece? No one listens to this. No one hear it. No, I'm just kidding. That's what I think about my podcast too. I'll say anything there. And it's like, no one's going to hear it, which is so stupid. <laughs> but that's it. Don't change don't put it. On no, one, of the most, one of the most difficult things about doing this is that you sit in a room like this with the three of us and yeah. you kind of forget that like this later then goes out to yeah. a, a lot of people. I have a very serious question. Yeah, but I want to, but it, but just to wrap that up. Wrap it up. Okay. Just to wrap that up, I think that we don't care, even if she agreed to it, even if she made money from it, even if Chris was like this, like we don't care anymore. We're just, and the, I think the reason we don't care is because we all kind of assumed that might have happened. So Ray J really wasn't bringing anything like shocking. We were like, wait, 
we kind of thought that she might have wanted this to come out to get her famous. And it she, did. It also is kind of like you were in on the lie for all these years. And now like you want to come out because you want to like coattail ride. Yeah. Hungry Tiger vibe. Hungry Tiger. And I did an ad once for his um, like headphones. What? He has like a big tech brand. Ray J. You didn't do Beats by Dre? Ooh. No. Ooh. No. Okay. Moving on. <laughs> okay. Your question. Beats by Dre has a lot more money. I'm I know. No, this was a long time ago, guys. Okay. Okay. I have a very serious question. I want to know your take on Emirata dating Pete Davidson. Do you know my beef, beef with Emirata? Yes. That's mm. why I'm asking you. And you can maybe give the audience context for those who don't know. So it's not really beef. Um, um, maybe she thinks it is. I, I would love her to come on the podcast. I think we got to know. She probably you guys will. should do a swap. She just came out with a podcast. She do a swap. Be like, um, no, I know Michael. <laughs> she knows Pop Cole. Yeah, Michael. Michael. Uh, Michael. I think she probably will. I know you would think, but I think she doesn't like me. And here's why. She, well, probably Michael doesn't know the story. So we're telling it to him, right? I don't know. Any, okay. I didn't even know that they were dating. No, he didn't. not Emirata. this story. No, I'm telling the beef story. The oh. beef story, Michael. Okay. My beef story with her. Okay, I'll keep up. I okay. promise. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so she had a baby. <laughs> you guys, every single time she talks <laughs> about no, something juicy, I pull my phone up. Um, and then I can't look at you when I'm talking, so I'm just going to look at Michael. So when she had a baby, four days after, she put up a... Uh, uh, mirror selfie of her in a bikini looking the same exact way that she okay. does today. And I, and I posted and was like, Oh my God. Oh. Th and then I was like, Oh, you know what? This is probably pre taken. Like it's probably from before she had to be four days ago. As you know, Lauren, you're in diapers still like, you know, like don't mind the bod, like not even talking about the bod talking about like this, the, 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 the hospital underwear. Four days after you have a baby, it, it feels like you were run over by a Mack No, truck. like you're not taking sexy selfies. Let's put it that way. So I wasn't even talking about her bot. I was more like, this can't be now. It's been four days, literally. And then I noticed that in kind of like a small print that kind of blended in at the beginning, it said like, excuse the docotot. Were you around for excuse the docotot? No. It was a huge thing. Hey, Lauren, you guys isn't a follower like I thought I you am were, a were. follower. Okay. Well, okay. I am a follower. Excuse the doctor. I was dot. there. <laughs> I don't know about excuse the doctor. Okay, so so she put excuse the doctor. You know what a doctor is. For yeah, people yeah, that yeah. don't know, it's a baby lounger. Okay. So in the background of the photo of her look, looking super hot on the bed was a doctor, and she wrote excuse the doctor. And I went off. Here's minutia. Here's an example of minutia. You got caught in all the details. Yeah, I was like, you guys. She's saying excuse the doctor because she doesn't want us to think like I just said that this was taken. Before the baby. She's making it clear. The docotot is out. It's being used. The baby's here. So you believe this was a pre-stage photo to... No, no, no. You're not... not you're, no. Uh, I'll, I, okay. Uh, but you know what? I said I was going to keep up and I'm not. I'm just... I'm fully not keeping <laughs> up. She, she posted a photo. A hot thirst trap. A hot thirst trap where she looked hot four days after having a baby. And so a lot of people online assumed, oh, she took it before... That's what I'm saying. You she got pregnant... And that she was lying that and it was... And people saw, she saw the comments of people being like, oh, you took this before you got, you had the baby. So then she went on her stories. No, no, no. She did this initially. I just didn't notice the excuse of Dr. Okay, I'm she saying in the thirst trap, she, the caption, let's put it this way, was excuse the docotot, meaning I took it as don't for a second think this was pre-taken. The docotot is here. This is my body four days after birth. That's how I read the situation. Meaning, like, why would a docker top? Why would a docker top be there if there's yeah, not she a baby? Have a there? Doctor top in her bed, like she was basically out. And saying in a in a round I'm hot already. Way, <laughs> I, I, I after four days having a baby, my body. I'm back. Like, I'm okay, back. so you're like the bullshit is what you're saying. I oh. no no. <laughs> Uh, what the Michael, fuck? Can you keep up? I get what you're saying. Go on, okay, Michael. This it. is what I was saying. Yeah, she wants us to know that she's hot right now. Okay, already. So okay. she's letting us know that it's in real time. Yeah, okay. she doesn't want anybody guessing. Like, oh, maybe this was before the baby came. I was just saying, she. No, no, wait, you guys. We thought this was taken before the baby. The docotot's there, and not only that, she's saying, "Excuse the docotot." Because she wants us to know that it's there because that means the baby's here. And that means in four days, she looks exactly like she did. Yeah, I kept up with this. Okay. Yeah. And so you, but so she got mad at you for 
oh, wait, there's more to the story. So huge thing. We're like, excuse the zakatat, excuse the zakatat. Like, this could have been merch. It was a huge thing. And we started talking about it in situations. The way, like, think about a model or or just an Instagram person, like, posting a really hot photo and, like, let's say, like, sipping water and being like, I love water. It's like, no, you're posting it because you look super hot. So that was kind of the vibe. Or, like, <laughs> Lauren. <laughs> I do not do that. I say, you know what's in my water? Antioxidants. Chia <laughs> yeah. seeds. Tags all the brands. Little lemon. <laughs> and then checks the angle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Go on, go on. So that was my whole thing. It wasn't mean. It wasn't how dare you. you know, that's not my vibe. Like, how dare you create standards? That's not me. People felt that way. Let me tell you, when I post about Emrata, my inbox, even from Hollywood people, industry people, people don't like her. And it's not because she's hot. Because how many hot people do we, like, you know, bow down to and like put on a pedestal. There is something about her that makes women really specifically not like her. I want to actually defend her for one second. Mm -hmm. Wait, there's more to the story though. I I know. Okay. I'll let you, I'm going to let you finish the story and I'm going to actually say that. Okay. You go. Okay. I'll just finish the story. So we lean in. None of it on my side was you're too hot and I feel uncomfortable with me. I'm not blaming her. Got it. I would never be that girl to say that. And I know I feel like you're always uplifting. Yeah. I was like, she's so hot. So I would never be like, you're too hot. I was just like, the excuse the dot thing was just funny to me. Um, And then she went on a podcast, Howard Stern. I mean, Howard Stern's show. And she was asked um, (laughs) about her post baby bod. I thought you guys were, I thought you guys were looking and they go, there's Um, the image there. She was asked about her post baby bod and Howard doesn't give a fuck. Right. He was like, you snapped back, you know, (laughs) um, like he didn't get the memo. So she's like, yeah. And she's like, and then when I did, people were like really upset. And then she said, and this sentence I'll forever, like, remember it. She said, especially this one woman with a small following got really, really angry about it. So I posted that and I didn't even care about the small following, but my followers were like, she jaded you like small. And at this point you have how many followers? I don't know, like 400,000. Like, yeah. So to her 12, 13 million, fine. But like no one would, I was like, she could have said this annoying girl on Instagram, but she chose to say small following. Anyway, thought it was funny. Obviously posted it, leaned in. Small following became like a thing. People like my followers will like call themselves that, which is really cute. Um, and, uh, that's a story with Emrata. So I would love to sit down with her and say, I hope like take a joke. Like, you know what I mean? Like, why couldn't you see it? No one was angry about you being hot. And I feel like that's why women might not like her because a lot of her shtick is kind of like, I'm really hot. Like, I think to your it's point- really hard to be this hot and, you know, not be taken seriously and not like be seen as like an activist of the women's. I I think to your point, like the reason the people like the Kardashians is that they can take a joke. Exactly. Right. Like, and that's, what's like relatable. It's like, you know, they're billionaires, you know, they're, they have the looks, they have the life, they have all the, but like they can deprecating, they can take a joke. And I think these people that start to get this, like, they get this level of fame or what they perceive to be as a level of fame or a level of importance. And then it's like, all of a sudden they become these very serious people. Yeah. Like shoot me if that ever happens. Right. Like yeah. I, like you have to be able to take a joke in life. Yeah. You have and to you be have to self-deprecating. Like, what's going to really offend you. And what's like, Oh, she said, it's like, that should be like the Kardashians would take that fucking any day. Are you kidding for all the shit they get? You know, I okay, agree. Defend, defend. No, I actually, I agree with everything that you're saying. I think that I have a little bit of a different perspective on her because I read her book. It and was called my body. Right. And, and <laughs> well, wait, hold on. Could you this, imagine? this Could is you how this is how I'm going to defend her. I just laughed the First she of all, it. she's a very eloquent writer. She, so I can imagine that it would be frustrating, fr- frustrating being such an eloquent writer that had profound stories in her book and not being taken seriously. Now, because she's so hot. Yeah. And no one takes, you're not taking seriously in your life. I feel like I'm taking, I feel like I'm hot and people take me seriously. It's hot. Like, it's like, I, is she this super human level hot that she, no one would believe she could like write an essay? Like, I just feel like that's not true. No, I think it's like, this is not even just for hot. I think it's certain people, if they start to feel like they get put in a box and then they get frustrated with that box there's almost like this uber level of insecurity comes out to prove that they're not just th- that yeah. thing in that box. And I'm not even calling her out. I'm saying that happens in all sorts of walks of life. It's like, 
it, it, it would probably be very frustrating to have talent in other areas of life, but then people look at you as like, I'm just the hot person or I'm just the funny person or yeah. I'm just the whatever person because people are multifaceted and I can see why that would be frustrating. But then what happens is then people sometimes lash out and like the insecurity shows. And I firmly believe that as human beings, we are all unattracted to insecurity on in any kind of form. I, I don't, I think that people are inherently turned off by insecurity. Mm. Um, and it's just one of these things. It's like a level of weakness that we recognize in people. And like, if you're, if you're a primal animal, you start to be like, I don't like to see that in people. And why the Kardashians to go back to them is like, you know, there is probably those moments where they feel insecure about things, but they're, they're, they're able to shake it off and have the confidence. And yeah. so I think like, and this is not just with celebrities, this is anybody like when, you know, you meet someone and they, they, they ooze insecurity. It's like, you're, you, you kind of want to get away. Okay. So she might be, you know, insecure. Um, and I actually, that's the thing. I really could like her. I'm like, not even I saying have her, no though. beef with her. I would love to have her on my pod and clear the air. And I would love to, like, I follow her. I, I, I listen to her pod with Julia. For Julia's voice. For Julia's voice. Um, and you're right. She is smart. Like, Amrata is smart. She's well-spoken. She, um, I still think she was, like, created by a man, though. Like, the thing she says, you know what she said on the podcast with Julia? Julia was saying how she's, like, in her era of not giving a fuck. Like, in her, she calls it, like, her ugly era. Which, like, she's like, I don't dress for men. Which I, you could tell, like, she doesn't dress for men. Like, she's not trying for guys to be, like, that's so hot. And Emrata was like, yeah, uh, they were just, like, shitting on men. And Emrata said, like, see, my only problem is I really love sex. Was she not created by a man? What do you mean what do you created mean? by a man? What does that mean? It means, like, everything she kind of says and does is, like, what a man would want. Do you know what I mean? Huh. Like, I've most women are thing. out here being like, I'm tired. Like, I don't want to have sex. Julia was, like, saying how she's not into, like, men at all right now. Um, and Emrata was just saying, like, how she she agrees with Julia. She, like, hates men also. But, like, she just loves sex so much. Why is there this big call to hate men? I don't understand. That's their th that's kind of their vibe right now. Because I love women. Yeah. But I but I, and I don't want them to hate me. Yeah. I don't know there. I feel like there are women that were really burned. I think Julia might've been cause she like is really hating men right now. And Emrata might've been burned by her ex. I think he might've cheated. But so don't you like think that it. that is, I mean, again, like I don't know these two women, but don't you think it's like, maybe they're just like picking the wrong guys. Um, like, can we say that? I'd be like, Hey, maybe you two just like chose like duds, like bad apples. And now you're extrapolating that to think, like Lauren? everybody. I think that I don't know anymore. Like I've been with the same person for 12 years, like asking me for any date. Like I don't remember. This is what I think. I think when people get into the camp where they're generalizing everything, mm -hmm. it becomes a huge problem. Yeah. I think there's, it's to say I hate men is, or, or no, actually I'm not going to say that to say an, underlining tone or to give an underlining tone of I hate men it's so general there's all kinds of men out there I think you could say I hate men who cheat I right. hate men who are unfaithful well, you know I hate men who lie but to generalize all of them in one camp yeah I don't think it's fair you yeah. know what's funny I'll, ta I'll talk a little bit about like what we're doing at Dear Media here and I do it as like kind of like a th an experiment in a way where like it is a very mission driven company to amplify female voices and bring awareness to female focused brands and businesses and all and, and dollars and all these things which we've done. But I was very intentional from the beginning to have men and women work on that together and not just be a place where it's like only women work here mm -hmm. and only women voices are highlighted mm -hmm. here. And if you look at it, it's like it's the him and her show. And the point is, is like men and women can do phenomenal things together and bring each other up. But I think you start to get into this weird space now where it's like, it's can only be men or only be women. And like, we're alien. It's like two sexes together, amplify, like building each other can build phenomenal things. You and your husband, I feel like have a very solid relationship. Yeah. He seems very comfortable with your success. Yeah. He very much is. And he's so shy and quiet. And he like, is. Oh my God, are you kidding? It's why I still don't get it sometimes. I'm like, oh, but then I get it. I'm like, okay, it makes sense. Cause then I just talk all the Well, time. yeah, you're like, you're yeah. the Broadway star move. <laughs> <laughs> um, when I met him, actually, I was, I came to Israel to, for like a vacation when I finished college. And I was like, and there were like no hot guys in my college. And I was like, I'm going, my, my mom's Israeli. So we spend a lot of time there growing up. 
was like, I'm going for a month, having fun, hooking up, like Israelis are hot. And I met him like the second day and ended up staying there for five years with him. Wow. Yeah, got married there. And then when we came back here in 2016, that's when I like started my pages kind of out of like when I came here and thought everything would be great. It was really hard because I was moving this Israeli here and like I didn't know what the fuck I was doing and like all this shit. So I became kind of like depressed, anxious. And that's how like not skinny enough out really started like in the mix of that. Um, but he is. He's so he's just like so supportive, so chill. Um, and the only thing like I don't think we fought. We're married. We're together for like 12 years. We didn't fight until we had a baby. Like you we never, never fought but until we, now we fight. Yeah, but, but that's like, normal. It's wild how a baby even changes like relationships that are like the most like rock solid. Why that do you was guys the only fight? Thing. Like, like what are we fighting Noah over? Stuff. Yeah. Um, I think at the beginning, I don't know if Michael was like this, but like he kind of sucked. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if Michael sucked, but like he was in shock with the baby. Like he didn't know what to do. It, you know what's a, so it, funny? It's an what? adjustment. Michael do you know suck? what's so funny? <laughs> what? I was your husband. <laughs> Stop. You're in I shock? was in shock. Really? I, 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 I don't know, know, know if he agreed. Was postpartum. Well, I, I, oh I, I my just God, can't I was say so it. You know I mean? Well, you could say it. No, I no. was so postpartum. I was like, what's happening? That's crazy. So so he was in he shock. He was in shock. Like, and he wanted a baby more because in his, like I always wanted a baby, but I wasn't stressed in time. I had no at 30, 32. In Israel, that's like old. Israel like equated with like, let's say the South. Like people just get married younger, have babies younger. So all of his friends would have like two babies. And he's like, why aren't we doing this? Why aren't we doing this? And he thought of it sort of like to check it off. Like we need to be doing what everyone is doing. And I kept on being like on my own time, I'm going to do it. Um, and I definitely did it on my own time. But still, I was, I think you're, I was angry because it's like, you're pregnant, you're doing everything, you're giving birth. And then he's in shock and he can be in shock <laughs> and stand there. Like, I just remember him standing behind me, changing a diaper, just like standing. And I'd be like, can you give him a bottle? And he'd be like, he was just in shock. I think for like a very long time. So I think I got like bitchy. You know what I think the shock is, is like a woman obviously carries the child exactly. the whole time. Right. And so you're bonding and spending time with it the entire time. Uh, but then like the shock as a man, when it comes like all of a sudden you come to the realization that like, holy shit, your life is just not your own anymore. And like, there's a real responsibility and you can't just like do what you want. And also what you said exactly is like, we had have had more time. Like you were going through it. We're going to the appointments. We're feeling the baby move. Like whether you're like relating to that in the moment or not, it's happening. They're from the sidelines and then being like, oh, holy shit. What? Now him and Noah have the cutest relationship. But it took him like till Noah was less of a baby, like when Noah became more of like a child, like less of a baby that doesn't do anything. Yeah, it's like it has to have. It, yeah, he felt like he couldn't just like coddle the baby. So I think yeah, like I got Charles a little was angry. born and he didn't look at me until like like three, four months old. He like, he like didn't like acknowledge like him and Lauren were like in a deep bond meditation, like loving each other, like kissing each Are other you in love. I make out, but with but, um, I but as a man, you don't get the like inner you don't get this kind of interaction yeah. until like a few months after. Right. When you can like, so I think I was, I think it mostly came from that. Just like being a little angry at him. Cause he wasn't stepping up being like, Oh my God, I always thought you would be the most amazing father. Are you not? Did I make like, are you not what I thought you were going to be? But like, take that and like make it super bitchy. And that was me for a really long time. And I think he was kind of like, wait, he didn't know how to handle me being so bitchy to him. And I've become nicer. I think. But it, I think the baby change changed that. How are you bitchy to him? Like, give me an example of something that you... Oh, my God, like, like everything. Like, give me an example of something he does that you're just like, ugh. Well, I think it's also... He reminded me the other day that I used to make him coffee every morning. Oh, please. I swear. He needs to make you coffee. No, I understand. But, like, he lived that life. I'm like, my God. He was like, you used to make me coffee every morning. He used to put his feet on me watching a show, and I used to rub them. Now I'm like, you know, like, what are you doing? I want to be on my phone. I want to like hold the glass of wine. I can't like be and hold, like put the foot on me and start like so twirling you, you it. You catfished him. You know in when a way. they do that? No, you like catfished him in a way. <laughs> yeah, I look back, Michael. I mean, I don't want to get too graphic, but like thinking of how I was like so sexual too. I'm like, oh my god. Thing. Why does that have to stop? Pre baby, you were more sexual than after. Yeah. Why, Why? are you more sexual now? 
I like I like sex, and I, that sounds like I feel like that <laughs> that's like Murata. <laughs> but I like sex. Yeah, I Wait, don't. Were you made by a man, Lord? You're made by man. I might be made by a man. Okay, actually, I like sex. You don't like sex less after you had a baby. I not hear that a lot. Not because of my body or anything. Like not because of my body. I think You're it's just more tired. like. I'm tired. You don't have the capacity. And like I put my Invisalign in <laughs> and I get a headgear. And give... I have to sleep with my eye shut because it gets really dry. What? Like imagine. I know. I well, had Bell's palsy. But don't we all have to sleep with our eyes wait, shut? Wait. No, I mean like if I don't close it with like tape. So imagine okay. you guys. I have my Invisalign in. My eyes <laughs> with you. tape. Let me get my no. You're a content whore. You're a content whore. Hold on. This is like pure cloney. Like, tell okay. me about your Invisalign. Okay. Go ahead. So I'm with Invisalign in. My eye is taped shut. And then he'll like start touching me. Because men don't care. Right? No, and I'm don't. like, we don't care. what do I do? Like, am I like, you know, rip the eye tape. And then in that moment, I don't feel sexy. And I don't feel sexual. You know what I mean? So I think it's a lot... A lot but, that. But don't you so feel tired. excited that he even it desires you no, in she that doesn't. state? No, she doesn't. She's tired. Oh. I know he's excited all the time. It's like I can't hug him without him being Yeah, but excited. let me give you the flip side. What if he wasn't? No, that would probably be hard for me. Oh. <laughs> but So he can't win? No, but I'm saying, no, if I had a guy, if I was married to someone who wasn't attract, like wasn't turned on by me, but I would also like to be able to cuddle with him without him having that lead to sex. I feel like you just want it when you want it how you want it on your own terms. But I feel like you've got a better situation here where it's like your husband's all riled up about you and right. like you'd rather like... I'm telling it, you I can't hug him. Like is that normal? Like, no, but that's great. It's so cute but it's also like... Make another baby. Calm down, you know? Calm down a little bit. I just want to hug. I came to bed the other night. It was really cold and I went in for like a little cuddle and he got so excited. I, and it's like I just wanted you to keep me warm. Are you ready for what Michael did to me? <laughs> Last night, Michael tried to fuck me with my mouth tape on. <laughs> hey, listen, that's the best time. And talk. by the way, I haven't had a chance Wait, to go, shave did either. You, did like, you go with, with it? Uh, yeah, I go with it. She never says no. No, she said no. No, for I never a few say times. no. You never say no. Uh, last night, we last night, I was we, like, we just really? did a whole show. We don't I need to go back no. into this. We already, we just did a whole podcast. Hey, do you know why? I though? need to listen to I it. I never say no. You were here yesterday. You know why? I rally. I, I had to test her because she talked this big game yesterday about how she never says no. I never say and no. And we we got on a we landed um, I had two mouth nights tape ago. On. I, like, well, we landed two nights ago at like one a.m. and then we worked like from seven until like all night. And then I was like, let's see if she really means what she I says. I did it. Stop. And she what did do you it. ask? No, what she are you did it. About? I did it. She did it. Wow, Lauren, you were made by man. I just think it's, I love my husband and I want him to be happy. And I think like. That's really cute. If I just, he does a lot for me in a lot of different ways. He's very helpful. And I think it's just like one gift I can give him. I also like sex though. Yeah. Honestly, you've, this, these last few days on the show is making me sound like a huge Per and making me <laughs> making me sound like I'm forcing sex upon my no, wife. Like every I also doesn't sound like that at all. I get not having the capacity though for certain things. So yeah. I can relate to what you're saying just about different things. Like I, I get how you're just like, it's been a day. I've yeah. I've podcast, I've done all this yeah. shit. I've posted, I'm interacting, yeah. I'm da -da -da -da, I'm doing Skype calls. Like, I just like when I want to get in bed, I wanna actually go to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like a pretend situation. Do you sleep with your phone in the bed? <laughs> um, I mean, your eyes taped and you have Invisalign. And so, no, it's like, not a pretend. No, that's what I'm saying. So when I'm done with the phone, it's a really like the chapter is closed because the eye tape goes on. You know what I mean? So you can't like. I can't be that spontaneous with it. Can you listen to a podcast? With my eye tape? Yeah. Why wouldn't I be able to listen to a podcast? I don't know. Like, are you in bed listening to a podcast? No, first or of all, no, no, no. You're just off your phone. Um, no, I'm on my phone before the tape. Okay, but so when the tape's on, there's nothing. Yeah, but tape on means done. Done. Why don't you just tell them that the store's closed when the tape's when on? When the tape is on. That's true. You could I just think I've like, said it once, like, baby, when the tape is on, like, it's on the time. But yeah, men don't care. It's crazy. But I will say this, because I've already shared, but I will say, like, I know a lot of women that don't like it, but I always ask them, like, do you come? Like, are you orgasming? And their answer is always no. For me, thank God that, like, he knows what he's doing, and I do every time. So for me, it's not not liking it. Once I start it, I like it because I'll always have fun. But I think it's just like, uh, it's like, 
you know, like an old Jewish lady thing, like, oh, uh, vibe. Uh, but yeah, but I think a lot of women don't like it because they're not actually enjoying themselves, you know? I think if you are not coming every single time you're having sex, I would get to the root. But Lauren, do you know that that's probably most women? Do you know how many women I've asked? Like, and it's like, the answer is no. All right, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. For email campaigns, collecting donations, analytics, blogging tools, e-commerce, SEO tools, and more. Let me tell you about Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. So Michael and I are involved in a lot of different businesses. We invest in a lot of different businesses. And one thing I can tell you behind the scenes, people are talking about Squarespace. This is such an incredible tool to have in your toolbox. Let me just start with the e -com. So Squarespace is everything to sell anything. It has the tools that you need to get your business off the ground. So if you have an idea, this is like an incredible thing to start with. First of all, it has e-commerce templates. It has inventory management, a simple checkout process, which is so important if you're selling on e-com and secure payments. So whatever you sell, Squarespace has merchandising features to make your products look the best online. And another great thing is it has video blocks, which is really important to me. So you can present your videos from YouTube on their site. And you can also add like an image overlay to your video to improve your website's loading speed. These are like little things that you wouldn't think of when you're starting a business, but they're really, really important. I think it's so cool that they're also a fan of collecting donations. So you can support your cause by gathering contributions with PayPal, Apple Pay, Stripe, or Venmo. They make it really seamless and easy. And then, of course, they have blogging tools. So if you want to add a blog to your website, we're doing that right now currently with the Skinny Confidential. Basically, this is like a one-stop shop for a business owner online. All right. So attention business owners, if you're selling on e -com, you're going to go to squarespace.com slash skinny for a free trial and use code skinny to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. In my fridge, I have a snack shelf. I decided to do this as Zaza has started opening the fridge and grabbing for snacks. I saw that a lot of the stuff that she wanted was up too high but it was stuff that wouldn't get messy if she grabbed it. So what I did is I got all these little snacks that she likes and I organized them in these really pretty acrylic clear boxes so she can see them. And they're all lined up, super easy for her to grab. She opens the refrigerator and she can see exactly what's there. One big part of this snack shelf is Perfect Bar. So I have the big ones and I have the mini ones. They have these like little mini snack size ones. And I'm obsessed with these ones for her because they have six grams of protein and they taste delicious. They also are like made of freshly ground nut butter, organic honey, and 20 organic superfoods. So it's just like a bar that packs something in it when you're going to have a snack instead of just handing her pretzels. I know she's at least getting protein. So the one that I like to give her, and this is the one that I'll even carry in the diaper bag, is the dark chocolate chip peanut butter with sea salt because that's her favorite by far. And trust me, I've given her every single kind, but this is the one she goes to. I really like the coconut peanut butter and the cookie dough. And these are the ones that I carry for Michael. And I also have those in my fridge. So I do three flavors. There's tons of flavors. You can go on there and check them out. But those are the three ones I do. You should know that this bar is made with whole food ingredients. They contain no artificial preservatives. They're also non-GMO, gluten-free, soy-free, kosher, and low GI. Perfect Bar knows that it will be love at first bite for you. So for a limited time, they're offering you a chance to try the refrigerated protein bars for free. So here's how it works. Sign up for email or text and upload a picture of your receipt from your local grocery store, and they'll reimburse you for the cost of one bar directly to your Venmo or PayPal account. This is so cool, right? All you have to do is go to perfectsnacks.com slash skinny to get a free Perfect Bar today. That's perfectsnacks.com slash skinny to get a free Perfect Bar today. Happy snacking. All right, I am a big traveler, but I'm really, really into right now being organized when I travel. I feel like when I unpack, I'm organized, but I feel like when I'm traveling, the organization is not quite there yet. So one thing that has saved my life and everyone needs to go on this site and get if you travel with skincare and makeup is the Base Cosmetic Kit. Okay, Base, you've heard about it all over Instagram. It was created by actress Shay Mitchell, and she wanted to make sleek, affordable bags, luggage, and accessories. And let me tell you, 
they are chic. They have like a base weekender bag that they sent me. It's so cute. There's room for everything. She really thought of like every nook and cranny when she designed this. But right now, I have to tell you, I'm going to go back to this. You have to go on and get the base cosmetic bag. It is so good. I have tried every single cosmetic bag on Amazon. I've tried all the expensive brand names, and this one is my favorite. I'm into the beige one right now, but I am not mad at the black one either. So they ha- it's like a spill-proof cosmetic case. And so if you want to stay organized with your makeup or your skincare, whatever, it's all perfectly organized in this cosmetic case. And also what's amazing is it has a, like a little mirror. So if I'm in route, I can just touch up my makeup or my skincare. It has so much storage. And then there's like a removable brush holder that pops out. This is the cosmetic case. I can tell you that. And I would also check out their base weekender bag. Really seriously, so hyper-functional. I'm a big fan of this luggage. It has over 30,000 five-star reviews. I just think that their luggage and their accessories, their bags are perfect for a quick trip or a long trip. Right now, Base is offering our listeners 15% off your first purchase. You are going to visit basetravel.com slash skinny. Go to basetravel.com slash skinny for 15% off your first purchase. That's B-E-I-S travel.com slash skinny. That blows my mind. I know. When you tell me that. I I, I honestly haven't exp- haven't talked. You've talked about sex on here now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. When have we not? When have we not? <laughs> I think if if you're listening and you're not coming during sex, that is absolutely unacceptable for yeah. you. And there there's so many different tools in a toolbox to be able to come. What I would say if you're not coming during sex is stop relying on your partner to make you come and take it into your own hands, literally and figuratively. I would say, and I've said this to a friend that changed her life, what you said like by yourself to find out what does it for you. And then you can also tell the person. And also just sometimes like you can't rely on the other person. Just get a vibrator and bring in bed Mm. and just like solve the Like we got to be efficient. We got time management going on. No, if you're just getting banged with nothing, then I real, then I really like, you got to have a vibrator, like get a vibrator. No, I mean, I'm not even saying you need it, but I'm saying if you are getting banged and not coming, then that's wild to me. Then, then I definitely wouldn't do it. Well, yeah, if I'm not, but if, wait, that, uh, if I was in that situation, then I would never do it. Okay, we're gonna let's let's rephrase what I said earlier. If I was having sex with you and was not coming, <laughs> I'd be like, eh, sorry, the mouth tape's on. I got to get something out of it. Like, uh, yeah, I'll rally for my husband, but like, I'll give a blowjob all day long, no problem. Really? But, yeah, I don't mind that. Oh, at we're all. back here. We talked about this all okay, day yesterday. Sorry. Okay. No, no, but, but I, I mean, I'll listen to the episode then. <laughs> I can't, but you were made by man. I'll no, give a blowjob all day long. Well, the problem Well, not is, all day long. I just mean I'll give a blowjob. Like every day? Yeah, I don't, if you wanted a blowjob every day, because I, I have no, gotten No, no, we gotta, get, we gotta get off I've this. gotten quick. She, she paints me as this big blowjob guy. It's a big thing. We did a whole episode. <laughs> two minutes of trying, your day? I'm gonna get labeled in the wrong <laughs> two way. Two minutes of your day. And stop. And also, can we stop with the two minutes? I can, <laughs> give me a little more credit, all right? <laughs> Wait, can I just ask one last question before you move on? Do you swallow? No. Okay. I mean, if you ask, have, you, have I swallowed? Made Wait, you <laughs> made by man. Do I swallow every day? No. I don't ask it's her to It's a performative do thing. I, I don't ask her when to do you that. Swallow. I, w- I would, sw- I've swallowed before with you. But she I'm has, not. but I don't That's ask. That's really cute. I don't I'm ask happy her. for your That's marriage. cute. <laughs> no, I'm happy for you. I'm happy that you're. <laughs> hey, do you know my favorite? Your dad listens to this show, Lauren. No. Hey, Brad. Yeah. What? Every episode? Oh, I'm sure. Every episode. I was listening to this one. Yeah. Um, I think that that if you are going to have sex, you got to come because you mm. got to get something out of it. It's transactional. Yeah, right. He is. You should be. Uh huh. Have you heard that? You know that? I think it's Ron White. You know the comedian? You know him? Who? Ron White. You know the comedian? He's an older guy. No. Um. Anyway, he like he did this joke the other day. And he was saying that like he's really good at sex. He comes hundred percent of his time, and like his wife's really terrible. It's only about one third <laughs> of the time. He goes, I don't know what her problem is. She just she's not the good. The problem is him. Funny. No, it's a, he's that's obviously the joke, he's, that's the joke, Lauren. He's saying he's so good. He does it every time. That's it, so funny. Okay, so what is it like being a mom to Noah, balancing everything that you do? Because I have a real, I'm having a real issue with working from my phone and having two kids. I constantly feel guilty. So I don't have that guilt. <laughs> Give me a tip. Oh, you just do it and you don't care. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that first of all, when I, I told you about my husband being the one that wanted a baby at that time more. And that was because before I had Noah, I wasn't even making money from this. I wasn't nearly where I am today. So 
I think it was like I didn't I was scared to 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 have a baby and not be able to. So I'll always say to people like babies don't stop that. Right. But I also promise to myself that because I'm doing it. And I because I'm because I agreed, quote unquote, to have a baby before I feel like I've made what I wanted out of myself and blah, blah, blah. I was like, you're going to keep doing what you want to do and you're not going to have a baby change that. I've seen my sister. I've seen friends who like had a baby and they just, you know, they kind of don't do what they were doing before. And that's fine if they want to do that. But for me, it was really important. I even I remember saying out loud, like, I'm going to still be with my phone in my hand, like talking shit, like when the baby's on me. And that's like exactly what I did. And I think that Noah is. Until he started preschool, like school, three hour program this year before that two whole years at home with me, 24 seven, never a babysitter, never a nanny, never anything like that. So I'm not I don't feel guilty if I'm like with him and then on my phone and with him and on my phone, like he gets so much of me and so much love and so much like. You know, he's so I, I don't feel bad. How do you do I feel bad when he's like, Mama, <laughs> Mama. If, if 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 like I'm in the middle of something and he calls me a few times and I'm like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry, because I have to like finish something. And he's like, Mama! but he knows how to do that now. He'll just scream at me. Zaza tells Michael, she goes, get off phone, get off phone. <laughs> Oh, or no, like, told me the other day, no iPhone. I was like, oh my God. Or she'll come up and I have my laptop my and sh- close it and say no working. You then I feel bad. You, that's sad. I know. Well, you but don't want to make parents, them feel like, like Well, not our parents, but like, you know, there are parents that aren't home all day and pick up their kid from preschool at 6 p.m. So like what's, you know, people do what they have to do. Like those parents have to work. They get to spend one hour a day with their kid. They get to sp- spend one hour a day with their kid. You're actually making me feel better. I no, but it's true. I'm with Noah all day but he at moments he doesn't get all of me like I don't feel I don't feel bad for him he's the most loved foiled kissed like kid in the entire world there's not an ounce of me that feels bad for him I feel like he's so lucky people are so fragile with kids I mean listen when I was growing up my dad my mom and dad needed to do something I want to neglect him more I'm sorry like that's I think neglected kids are make it better they were like get outside I'll see you at 6 p.m like a little grit no, yeah. I literally have seen kids. I've seen parents like kind of be like whatever to their kids. And those kids are like super independent, super smart, super efficient. I'm like, am I coddling him too much? Like there are parents that are super, you know, those movies like kids that grew up in like trailer parks that they're in Harvard. Like, I don't know. I just feel like a little neglect should be good. I don't neglect at all. I feel like I should more. A little. Like, like let them cry. Like, nothing's going to happen. I'm like, he's crying, you know? A little resilience. A, yeah, give them, a, let them toughen up a little bit. I agree. I agree. Yeah. So I don't. I feel guilty and you shouldn't either because it's your job and you have to work. And if I at any point feel like I literally can't be with him and do what I do, then I would make a change. Do you have a nanny? No, that's what I'm saying. I don't have to help. At all. No. How do you? My do husband it? works from home, so so like he's watching. So Noah. he could, if I'm doing like a podcast or something where I can't be with Noah, then he'll be with Noah. My mom is in the building. My sister's in the building, so it's kind wait, of wait, like, wait, 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 wait. We're gonna need. Yeah, but everyone has a life. But everyone has a life, and obviously can't be like helping me. Hold on, but your mom and your sister live in yeah, your building in the same building. Was that on accident or on no? Place? It was. We moved into the building, and then my sister and her boyfriend wanted to move, and we're like, oh, there's an apartment. You guys should check it out. And then my mom was still living in like the suburbs by herself when my younger sister moved out. And we felt bad that she was alone because she's um, di- single, divorced, whatever. Uh, and we were like, you need to come in the city. And we like moved her. We're like, so she's in the building too. But everyone has their own life. No one like comes in unannounced, like nothing like that. But it's helpful if I like, yeah, it's helpful. So, That's amazing. Yeah. You yeah. mentioned earlier that you had Bell's palsy. Yeah. Well, Can you how- tell? No. Okay. I had it just, it was so weird. I got it just in my right eye. When? In 2000 and um, like mm, 14. For the uninformed, what causes it and what? how does it manifest? They call it like a inf- like an infection of the like, of the, I'm pointing at my like face is it right like now. A, like a viral people, or bacterial? It's viral. It's yeah. Viral. So people say it could be, I mean, Chinese doctors will tell you like wind, but like. They asked me, like, did you have an earache don't, before? Don't come you? on here and make me scared of the wind. Just, <laughs> just don't. Wear a hat, okay? 
Um, I didn't pay attention to what happened. I, th- I, I wonder, I don't, I accepted it. No, what was wild is if you wake up and your whole face is paralyzed, which happens to so many people with Bell's palsy, you run to the hospital, you get a really high dose of like a steroid, whatever. Me, I was my little sister. I was living in Israel at the time. My little sister was visiting and I remember I was on my phone, like looking down and she was like, Amanda, like your eye is stuck up here. And I was like, that's weird. And I look in the mirror And it's like weird, but it was just my eye. So I wasn't that, like I didn't run to an emergency room. I was like, mate, you know what I started to think? It was so wild. I thought like that, that was my right eye. I thought that my left eye got like, um, like pink eye. So my other eye looked bigger. Like I didn't know what it was. So it took me time. And then I went to an eye doctor and I won't forget the eye doctor was like, we're not all symmetrical. Like made me feel like I was making it up, which doctors sometimes do. She was like, you maybe you should talk to someone like, you know, we're not all we can't all have even eyes. And I was like, I had an even eye before. <laughs> so oh. let it go. She kind of convinced me. I remember looking back at my Facebook tag pics. And I was like, maybe I did have that eye. Like I was just maybe accepted it. But I would go out and people would be like, what is literally wrong with you? And then finally, I made an appointment to a neurologist and he did an EM, um, EMG. It's on your face. It's the worst. Like, I can take pain. It's like needles on your face to see, like, the electricity in your face. So basically what happened to me is I got Bell's palsy, like, up to here. So it didn't affect my nose or my mouth, which is lucky because that's real bad stuff, but just my eye. Um, And that was confirmed diagnosis. And then I did actually, like, acupuncture and all this shit, and it really helped. But to me, I still notice it. I know that people don't. I still notice it. And if I don't shut my eye, it'll get really dry because it stays a little open. But, but is this like a lifelong diagnosis or yeah. is this something that, okay. You know, Unless you treat it right away, get the steroids. But I... What does a steroid do? It just gives the strength to come back to the I nerves? I wonder what t- it does like medically. But imagine like, Michael, if you wake up and your face is paralyzed, you're going to the hospital. There's something uh, that I had after jaw surgery that you're describing. It's called an identity crisis. Did you, have you, has anyone ever told you about this? When you look in the mirror and you don't recognize yourself, it sounds like you had a little bit of that. No, I didn't. It was real. No, 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 no. I know it was real. Oh, okay. My jaw surgery was real too. But I'm oh. saying when you look in the mirror. Like you started oh. questioning like, were you always of, like this? No, no. Because you look different to yourself. Yeah. It fucks actually with your brain. Oh, because really? Because when you look in the mirror and you're not used to looking at yourself the way that you were used to look. Yeah. It causes something in your brain. I swear to God. Someone's on a psychologist on here. I'll Google it and send it to you. It's it's where you almost sort of have a crisis in your head because mm. you're not used to seeing yourself like this. No, but this was real. Like, pe- no, what I mean is people were seeing me and co- like it was my eye was up here. I know it was yeah. real, but it's oh, you mean like still like something- the fact that I notice it still. Yes. Yeah, because you. I'll to, show you. I'll show for you. You to You'll, say you still notice it, I notice and when it. I look at you, I don't notice it. There's yeah. something. Well, okay. In look your at this. Brain. Look at this. I'm gonna look down on my phone okay. and see that this eye stays a little up. See? Wait, hold on. Never would notice that in my entire life. But are you seeing it now? No. I'm not a minutiae person. No. <laughs> Wait. No. Nope. You're not. See- Stop. Lauren, look over a second. Okay. Hold on. Seeing it now? To me, it just looks like you're looking down. I swear you can see I see it. But yeah, I, I know that it got much better. I look at pictures. I'm like, wow, that was bad. But like if, you know, I'm not going to do the things that you need. Like, I think you could put like a weight in one eyelid. But then it's like, I wouldn't do that. Yeah. You look great. Thank you. And I'm thankful. I'm like, wow, I am thankful that, it, you know, I know it happens to so many. It's such a common thing to happen. It happened to Angelina Jolie. Really? So many celebs. I think there's like a website that I looked up to make me feel better once. Like celebs with Bell's palsy. There's a website. Oh, there's a website for everything. No, I'm because sure. you, so many celebs have had it. Well, you look beautiful. Thank you. You're fucking crushing it. Thank you. You're one of my favorite shows on Dear Media. Thank you. I love listening to your podcast. Thank you. And I really respect how you've built your platform slowly, strategically. You've been smart about it. You are a brand. I know. I haven't been smart. I, I swear I don't think enough about what I do. Maybe I do. See, I don't know. I don't know either. I don't know if I agree with that. I'm going to defend I think, you. I think I have like good intuition. I will say that. I think I follow my intuition a lot with everything, even if sometimes it doesn't make sense at the moment. I'm then really happy that I listen to it. And I also think with age, like we we're talking about the TikTok thing, like I'm 34. You know, like if this would have happened to me when I was 24, I'm not sure it would have been the same. It's meaning like what? Meaning like the, how she's like shot 
up. Like I'm saying, like I I feel like I'm happy that this is happening when I'm at the age that I'm at and like not as as stupid and not like you can contextualize it. Yeah, like and I'm I'm smarter about it. I I take it day by day. I'm not like super phased by it. I very like grounded. So I think that like when I see younger people in this industry that do like kind of go viral or blow up and they're like 25, I'm like, oh my God, like I kind of want to like not help them, but I'm just happy that I'm at the age that I'm at and kind of at the headspace where I'm like, I'm a mom. Like there are other things that are important too. Um, Like Invisalign's your vibe. Yeah. Yeah. And and I tell you, don't ever drink red wine and put Invisalign over it. Did I say I this? don't drink red wine. Do you know it makes me like anxious and sleepy? I'm Have you tried Dry probably. Farms wine? I see that you promote it and I I should. I'm going to send you a box. Because natural wine I feel like is so much better. We found out they put 40 grams of sugar into each wine bottle. Of which? which brand? Of all the brands? All the brands. They add sugar. So Dry Farm has no sugar. Are you, is that well, there's also like, what was it like? No, it's not my company. Are you investing? <laughs> no, I saw my company. We, we got a whole th- uh, thing coming up, but there's like all of these. If it's not a natural, organic, and some, I forget the exact other terms, sulfate wine. free. Well, they, there's not just that, they have so many additives in wines. Like yeah. Some of it is like fish bladder and like stuff like that. You just, oh, I don't want to know. Look at this podcast, what we talked about in this episode. I know. I feel like we need to do another one where we talk about it. You can stuff. come on. You're so easy to podcast with. I could podcast with you for, well, I am going to podcast with you for another hour after this, but I could podcast with you for another six hours. You're oh, wait, dream. we're doing mine too? Oh, we aren't? No, we're not. We're not. <laughs> oh, I thought we were. Oh my no, God, no. I wish. No, oh, we should have. I know. We didn't plan it. Oh, next time. Okay. Yeah. Lauren, well, do you ever look at well, our I'm schedule? Bad at, I'm just... bad at back-to-backs anyway. So I'm happy that we didn't. Yeah. Wait, I'm not a back-to-back go. bitch. Not a back-to-back bitch. Oh. I can't like shift gears and like be like, we just, you know what I mean? No, I want you to talk about that because that's <laughs> giving me like Zoom vibes, how we don't like Zoom. Talk to me about the back-to-back. I don't role. like back-to-backs either. Well, first of all, let me tell you something about Zoom. I agree with you, in-person is better, but but I think that sometimes Zoom could be just as good, you know? I've had, my last two interviews was, were Zoom and like I used to very much hate on it, but like they were good. I managed to connect with the person, like- I think I'll tell possible. you this. I we think lose, you have a real talent. Though. We lose a lot of um we lose a lot of quote unquote names that won't come on unless it's Zoom and like we just have to pass on them. Like there's a lot of people, you okay, know. But I want to hear more about your back to back theory. I can't I can't I'm like not like I I can't like finish with you guys now. And then be like, hey, Michael and Lauren, welcome to the show. You know what I mean? You like, want, like we fresh. did yours, this is your day kind of thing. <laughs> When you come on mine, then like I want to be just no about Zoom. you as guests. Yeah, no with Zoom, I'm with Zoom. It's fine for me. Yeah, I'm okay with Zoom. I do a whole show on Zoom, the Cards Catch Up show. I don't know if a swap two is is. I also hate the word swap. I don't love it either. It's on my list of like influencers swap content. What was the other one? Yeah, uh, I would rather tiger. have to be <laughs> no, honest. I like to be to tiger. be honest, and this is maybe like a arrogant thing to say. I would rather just have um, people come on our show, and I don't want to go on a lot of shows. I want to go point. on Amanda because show. you know why we do this eight times a month. Hold on, I want to go on Amanda. No, no, no. I would go on like that, but I'm saying I don't want to do it regularly. You like you know that I had beef somehow with another podcaster. Here's the thing: I'm like you. I want people to come on my show. Like I'm not as much because people look at podcasts as like a platform to promote themselves, right? I'm not super like, I'm not, I don't have PR age. I'm not trying to like promote myself in places. So it's super nice for me to do podcasts with people that I know or want to do, but it's not like I'm like, this can be a huge, you know, I don't look at things like that. So when like, okay, so I got uh, an email about a swap from a podcaster. You might know about this. We'll talk about it after. Was it in inside or outside? Really? Okay. I'll tell you about it. Okay. So I was like super excited about this person to come on my show because I like when people come on my show. Do you get what I mean? Because I like, I think of them highly and I'm like, oh my God, come on my show. I'm less into like, not less into, but I'm not like, have me on your, you know, when people follow up and they're like, when can I come on your show? And you're like, That's no, because weird. listen, you make sense on this show, but I don't make sense on your show. What am I, what do you, I mean, like, it could make sense of it. Do but think, I get what no, you mean because I have like he can get off. You know what I mean? It's later. like what do you like? I, and I feel like it's so forced. Like sometimes when like, people we do a we show do swaps, and then yeah. like, do you want to come on? I'm like, do you want just Lauren? Like what? What do you want for me? <laughs> right? Like no, I like that he's straight up though. But so I wanted that person on my show because like 
how cool are you? Like, people are going to love hearing from you. But I would totally be down to do their show. And because it was, like, hard to schedule, they thought, like, I don't want to do it because I, like, didn't follow up and wasn't like, when can, when are we doing yours? And I'm like, of course I would come on your show. I'm just not... I don't like when I'm nudged about people coming on my show. I'll nudge for people to come on my show all day to follow up, like, if I want to guess. But, like, I'll never try to, like, have people have me because that feels like a thirsty tiger, hungry... Air high five. That's me, too. That's called... I did desperate energy. Right. But I get that a lot. And I hate when I get, you know... It's like you're not being too good to Are go on Are you getting show. a you lot just... of DE? <laughs> Call DE. Desperate energy. From after the Kardashians came on your show. Are you getting a lot of Hungry Tiger? No, I don't feel that. I feel like in a... No, I don't. Like from people in the industry? No. From Really? A, yeah. I would think after the Kardashians, you would have people from second grade reaching out. No. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Good that, for you. That, that's going to happen, though. <laughs> no, I, that's why I really like. I mean, I know New York isn't a bubble at all, but I kind of like that, like, I can be in that world when I want to. But, like, I live my own life. I'm not, like, going to, like, every event or. Anything. I live in Austin. I get it. I know. You don't have to hashtag. It's no networking. Yeah. There's no, like. I know. Trust me. Well, my favorite thing. Once I was just saying the other day, like once you I'll go to events of like if you guys were having an event, like I'd go. Right. Friends, people that you work with, but not like other people that are in this industry in some way, like invite me. Like, I don't even know you. Why would I show up to support your I don't even know you. The way my brain thinks, too, is if I'm going to spend one minute away from my kids. When I'm not working, make it worth you it. You got it. It's got to be you worth. You got to go. You got to be even with when we come out here, like the like we the guests we interviewed, like we wanted to make sure it's got to be it's got to be worth it. Yeah. Or I just don't want to do it. Yeah. No, I feel you. I feel you. I'm not a networker though. But I like with pitches now. I will say not because of the Kardashians. I hope not just because of that. But I think that with podcasting, I've really noticed a shift where like podcasting has become like. At first it started as like talk shit with other podcasters, like whatever. Now it's like on the publicity tour of it's, people's. It's become a real media outlet for people that are on the press tours. Yeah. There is I get nothing. press tour. I get but you know what the fucked up thing? And you might relate to this. And we definitely do. It's like, I, it's, you can't use this medium how you've used the Today Show. Does that make sense? Like, yeah. you can't, like it's very yeah. awkward when someone right. comes on and they have like, what's your talking point? So you yeah. send the question. I'm like, yeah. listen, this is going to be yeah. like, we're at dinner. Yeah. And it's like, gonna no, be- no, we're going to have to like talk. Yeah. There's I don't like that. There's nothing worse than someone that. comes yeah. on in Vanna White's, their product, the entire episode. There I is to you guys, it probably happens more. Uh, there is nothing worse than when I'm interviewing something and they try to just relate it back to their product. Uh, their no, listen, this is I don't worst. even want to talk about that at the end. If you want to ask me where to find me, great. Go. The audience will seek you out if they like you. No, this is the, the worst. The audience yeah. will go find I even you. don't like when people were like, when when other podcasters that I feel comfortable with at the end go to me like, so where can people find you? Oh, Lauren's going to do that to you at the end. But, don't do that, Lauren. But, but listen, here's well, the, but I I you just said, if people want, they'll find. This I know, is but the with most, you, I, but like, when I have to say like, and I came and I found on Instagram and a podcast by the same name. Like that's how it comes well, out for me. So I won't ask <laughs> <laughs> Or when the people come with their like, press team and their assistants and their publicists and they're sitting there. I'm like, what are you going to do? You're going to dive across the mic and stop me from asking no, a so question? No, so I had on like a, a guest and and she came with her PR and she was great. I loved her. And the PR, and ever since this, I asked PR people to never shout. Just tell me at the end because it really throws me off. And Who's the, shouting? Oh, we shouted. I, they I'll shouted at me. Oh, yeah, hold on. No, like, shout, yelled, like, no, don't talk about that right now. And I was like, ah! uh, I got, I felt like a teacher was yelling at me in school and I blacked out like you know, it's the hint? hard to get me to black out, but I feel like I was like, oh, OK. And since then, when they're PR people, I'm like, just tell me at the end. Like, well, this is edited. We're obviously not live. So just say no press in the room. Really? Hmm. Because it's too annoying because like, you just tell them, like, if there's something you really don't want, we could talk about it after. But like, you don't need some guy like perched over your shoulder the whole time you're doing that. I have a prediction that in two years, you're going to be a way bigger bitch, like a- in a good way. Like you're gonna be have boundaries and be uh-huh. like when it's also PR like is not you, allowed in the room. If you feel that oh. guarded, like just don't go on the show. But, yeah. No, it's but it's it's like but it was so stupid. It was such a stupid 
Yeah. By the way, everyone who's listening to a podcast with a guest on it, when you come with talking points and PR, the audience knows it. Yeah. Uh, People think they're like pulling a fast one over the audience. I could think of interviews in my head where some famous person got interviewed on big podcasts and you can tell that they've been approved the questions before. Yeah. They have talking points and they've practiced and it's fucking boring. Well, everyone asked me about the Kardashians like they really thought, you know, and and I was like, no, like they literally glanced when I got there that day. Like, oh, is that cool? And maybe like one question was taken out for Kim that was not even like dramatic. It was just like stupid. And that's it. Like Courtney didn't even know the questions like they don't like it wasn't which I loved also to find out for myself, you know, they don't like take when I did so seriously, when I did like something with Hulu, like with a br- big campaign, like they were very like Disney was very like, ask this, ask that. But the Kardashians as like, no, when they came on the podcast, they were like open to, 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 to talk about it. So I'm like, so cool. you won't like you reality TV star are going to bring a fucking publicist and now want to talk about shit. Like that's, what's wild to me. That like when you're around famous people that don't bring the performative assistant and then you're around influencers that have been around for five minutes and they have assistants in the room and make it very known that because when I see both sides, I'm like, I'll tell you what, Julia Roberts wouldn't be doing this. One of the coolest guests we've ever had. By far, you're going to die. Who? Was was actually Caitlyn Jenner. And I, she came. No, tell the story. Literally. We've never told it on air. No, like the studio was closed down one day Uh, before we had the new office in LA and it was closed down and and we were having her on, um, it was a while ago, but she showed up by herself, drove herself, you know, it was so organic. She showed up. At what time was this to contextualize? Like one o'clock. This is, this is, no, this this had to be, this, (laughs) this had to be. This had to be 2019. What do you mean? Like, this oh, be, she just transitioned. Yeah. Like, was yeah, there a lot yeah. going on? Yeah, 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 1 p.m. Yeah. This had to be like 20, 2019. She pulls up and cannot find where to park. Oh, my God. And so I said to the producer, Taylor, can you go down, please, and help her park? And he said, sure. So he goes down and she flags him over and says, get in my car. Taylor gets in her car and proceeds to you drive around looking for a parking spot. I did spot. once, yeah. Then she comes in, could not have been. No, nicer. no, no, no. They get lost in, in West Hollywood <laughs> driving around. Caitlyn Jenner and our producer, Taylor. <laughs> what and car? Was it a crazy car? I don't she know, loves no, no, cars. No, no. I was like, But they're just driving around. And you can imagine our producer, Taylor, sitting with Caitlyn Jenner, driving around West Hollywood, not finding. <laughs> and he's there messaging me like, hey, we're stuck and lost in traffic. And it's just him. And Caitlyn. And Caitlyn. Oh, my God. But that's so funny. Came in so open. No publicist. Took photos with us. T- did funny Instagram but, stories. But, the like, reason I mentioned it though didn't is, ask to take anything out. That's the worst. No, the reason I, I mention it though is oh, this you're is like going to be off air and be like, can you take that out? Well, this That's is, the worst. No, part. no, me. This is during a time when there was so much press on her and so much going on. It's like you show. It still showed up without like low maintenance. And I'm like, and then you're going to show up this person that's got 18 followers with a team of six and a publicist, and you're going to sit there and like guard. Which is it's it's get over yourself. Uh, you yeah. know what I mean, I. You know what the theme of this episode is? What What is it? Because I feel like I ruined it. You know what? We're not going to air it. You did a great <laughs> That's always in the back of my mind when I have podcasts. I'm like, well, I don't know. you know, you never know. Have you ever not aired one? No. We, we have. have. <laughs> really? Yeah, but just with like dud interviews. It's just like, it's just not going to. It's not, not going to land. Yeah. It's uh, for it's me, it's always awkward. in the back of my mind. It makes it less pressure. Um, but what I was saying before that the podcast became like a press tour thing. I used to say no to to people um, that I wasn't like obsessed with personally. And now because the pitches have gotten so much better, even if I'm not personally like obsessed with the person, I'll really have to like sit on it for like a few days or a week to just be like, okay, I'm not obsessed, but like the world is and they probably would be really interesting to hear from. So I think it's the podcast has also changed in that way. But 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 in a really cool way. Like I just had two, I had the author of a show that I really loved and it was such a different vibe. Um, yeah, did you watch From Scratch yet? No, what's that? On Netflix. Oh my oh, God. Is it good? So good. Okay. It was Zoe Saldana. It was produced by Hello Sunshine, like Reese Witherspoon's uh, thing. What's it about? Like a love story, but it goes like. Eh, not a love story. No, me. but it, at all. No. See, Made by Man. I know. You're when made. When you said that, I was like. Are you Made by Man? 
Listen, if she is, I'm happy. I know. I'm getting a lot of benefits over here. Maybe. You're coming off pervy again, Michael. Mm. Maybe. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm not a love Listen, story. I'm not going to lie. I am a little pervy with I my I love wife. housewives. <laughs> yeah. But no, it's different than housewives. Okay. Yeah. Oh, speaking of housewives, she was one. Luann came on 10 minutes in. She's like, when are we discussing my cabaret show coming up? And I was like, oh, my God. What'd you do? I froze because I'm telling you, when people throw me off like that, I'm, I was just like, at the end, but we don't have that. And I just made a really short interview. Like, I talked for 10 more minutes. And I was like, so tell us about your cabaret. Huh? Well, I have and then a, I proceeded to tell the story everywhere, not caring if she hears I talked. I have it. a prediction with you. I have a feeling you will start to go into areas of interviewing that you haven't thought about before, because ultimately people come to your show for you. And it's like, yes, it's great. You get big name guests. But I think like what I will try to remind people in this medium is like they're coming for you mm. and your take on that. And what will happen is, and at least what's happened with us is you'll start to kind of your interest will start to expand outside of like the typical and you'll start to have these conversations that you never expected. Right. And I think like that will be interesting for you to explore because the audience may not expect a lot of the conversations you're going to start having. Agreed. That's what I feel is going to happen. No, I think that's what I'm saying. I feel like it already is because like I took on a few interviews already that I feel really good about that were outside of that. Um, but yeah, it's funny that you say that. And I think it's an important point, the podcaster thing, because sometimes you'll see comments like you talked over the gas or you interrupted or you said, and it's exactly that. Like, this is my show. Like I should be talking and yeah, I never want to interrupt or, you know, make somebody lose their train of thought and you could be better at that. But when I see that, it's like, I'm not an in reporter. Like I'm, this is my show. And like people, some people want to hear me too, you know? So so that's my biggest pet peeve. Not even about me when I see it about other podcasters. Like she won't stop talking about her. It's like it's her show. Well, you know what happens is sometimes you'll have a guest on and the per and that guest will bring audience members that aren't familiar with your show or our show. Uh, and then what'll happen is if, if that guest starts to go down a tangent or gets boring, you knowing your show and your audience will maybe interrupt or interject to get it off. We do it all the time. Like if someone's on here and they're going on some weird rant that I know is boring or that I feel is boring we'll cut them off and then like but the audience that hasn't been here or the or the person that came with that guest yeah, is mad because you. like their person was getting interrupted or cut off but sometimes you have to cut off a guest because they're rambling about something right. that's worthless yeah or where i interrupt is when it's a vanna white what does that mean <sighs> like a ta-da <laughs> look at my product oh. like, and they're just trying to vanna white yeah. it's not yeah. their cabaret yeah like Come and You'll tell cut off. your cut story off. and have a conversation and the audience will fall in love with you. Yeah. This isn't QV fucking C. Yeah, this isn't QVC. Well, the host's job is to keep the show moving along. It's like we can only hear, hear so much about how you formulated your like next skincare product. I know product, you guys, right? you guys though experience it a lot more because you talk to like people in so many different fields. Well, we give the audience, like, I, listen, I think if somebody that's a founder of some kind of brand comes on and they're an interesting cat or interesting character and they've come up with a great, like, the audience is smart enough to go and seek out, like, the product line yeah. and the SKUs and all that, but right. I want to know their story and right. why. Like, I don't. We don't need to be told about, like, the turmeric that's in the plump. <laughs> it, who gives a shit? But well, they'll figure that out, right? Yeah. No, when I get pitches for, like, for, for like, that, like, brand owners, I'm like, D are you, like, I went to the dentist today and got a pitch right after for the from dentist, the dentist about the dentist to like wait no and then about oh my god oh no I agreed to do a Mario Badesco Badesco what's his name oh, yeah that's a good one a facial well I don't but no they then we're like oh do and I was like oh sure I'm down for a facial like who turns on a facial not me just do Instagram stories no but listen they were like but do you want to have the EVP on your podcast no I'll say no that but I'm saying like People don't sometimes think of context at all. It's like, do you see who I have on my podcast? I think that they just see your Instagram following yeah. and your yeah, platform they, they, yeah. and they don't. Yeah. They don't they, understand. Yeah. yeah. I think you're amazing. You Thank can come you. back anytime you want. I'll come Tell to us where to find you. I'll Tell us where to, to find you. I can't wait to have a product to promote one day. What about your merch? And use and abuse all the people that I've promoted products for, talk including about you. No, your kidding. cabaret. <laughs> <laughs> and talk about my cabaret. <laughs> um, and I'm Sienna Fat on Instagram and my podcast of the same name. <laughs> <laughs> Unrelated to that. anything that I talk about. Yeah. And I don't know if oh I think I'm going to get the black tat. I'm Have you just... been seeing me? I'm like, oh my God, do I need them in black? But I'm not sure they're their platform. And they're flattering on your feet because they're, they're black. nice. 
Yeah, I might get them. I think you're going to get them. I think so, too. I mean, I've supported Ugg enough, you know. Ugg. She wants the black Taz. Literally one pair they sent me. They're true you know when size. you get sent shit by brands sometimes and it's like three potato chips and they're like, did you get them? We ha- haven't seen the story. And you're like, the $3 potato chips you want a story for? I'm going to send you balls. Lauren had <laughs> I have somebody balls. Oh, you have it's balls. It's literally in my office. Lauren, oh, maybe, she'll balls. maybe make yeah, me I cut this. Um, she maybe make me cut this out of the show, but Lauren had somebody send her something. Like just randomly sent her, didn't had no interaction, didn't ask her anything. They sent her something. Don't, don't even know how they got and the then address. Didn't even know how they got. The, then she didn't post, and then the person went on and wrote a review about how terrible Lauren is for not posting about Two the out random of 10. thing. Influencer. Oh, I need to know who this is. Oh, yeah, I'm I gonna feel like guess. there's a lot of we need to know who this is. I know, Amanda. Thanks for coming on. Oh my god, thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you.